Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Taft. Very kind. And yes, it has been a long time. We looked up recently and found out on March 2nd, 38 years ago, I bought the first piece of property here. And thank goodness for bad news sometimes. Because a reporter called up and said, I know you're going to build an industrial building because there was nothing around. But what are you going to do about the sewer moratorium? What sewer moratorium? <laughs> it stopped everything. The highway was completed. The traffic was obvious. The boom had started small of everything following the infrastructure. Industry typically follows infrastructure, and people follow industry. And retail follows people, and people then follow retail again. But the industry that was first following this was held up by a moratorium, and thank God for that moratorium. Because you could see quickly this area, if patient, deserves better and can get better. So what is it that's better that we see today? And we is a big word. We is city council, the mayor, county council. It's a region, it's in state, it's in DC. We're the greatest country in the world. I've been fortunate to travel a lot of it. We are the greatest country in the world. And the Southeast, everybody knows, is the greatest area of the country. In South Carolina, certainly in there for the greatest state in the Southeast. And the upstate, we kind of joke, Charleston is living on its history. The upstate is making its history. <laughs> and we very well may be. We very well may be in the best region of the best state in the best country in the, in the world. And this may be the best place to be. 3,000 feet along I-385. The city of Malden has done form-based zoning. Wouldn't mean much to you. It's a developer's dream. The cooperation by every level of government is unbelievable. It is a partnership this day. It is always a link of a chain, and any link is weak. It doesn't happen. So what are we going to do? Traveling around the world, some of these posters are so anxious to get up, they're already moving. <laughs> so we are learn that you need to serve the people. That's what they do, and they do a great job at it. Well, developers serve the people, too. We don't go out and just build what we want. We build what we think other people want. And what we think other people want, developers are focused on location or size or the financing. A lot of different things go into every development. But we're now going to try and focus on beauty. It's been a loss factor in a lot of developments. And where are the most beautiful places in the world? A lot of people would say you can go to a small Italian village somewhere in Europe. We've been working with great team partners, Macmillan, Patterson, Smith, Harper Construction. We think we have found a new way of construction that can give the very authentic, real look of an older village and yet serve the modern needs of most every kind of use there is. You often hear of mixed use, and it may be an office in a restaurant or a little retail or something. This is a new town center. It's an entire town. It's residence, it's retail, it's restaurants, it's entertainment, it's institutional, it's outdoor events. We often say what happens outside the building is probably more important than what happens inside the building. It's a place. They call it in our industry a sense of place. You hear the expression, there's no there there. And that describes the suburbs all across America. It's one little building at a time, down a road, things that aren't always attracted. We put all our wires underground, we'll control the signage, we'll have landscaping, and we'll have beautiful buildings. And with that, we think people will want to come. Not just the buildings, we'll have a grand plaza, a piazza, a stage for performing arts. We're so motivated by the White's Pavilion downtown on the Reedy River that we've been inspired by the old Greenville train station that was demolished. 
an open air f for any kind of festivity, farmer's market, a wedding, a speech, a round breaking. We'll have activities planned over and over. Some of you are probably familiar with the old soapbox derby. Well, there's not one in South Carolina anymore. They would love to come here, and one day we'll be able to have a soapbox derby down the hill. We have so many things in our mind we want to do. There's no time to really talk about them all. We're focusing on getting out of the ground. We have spent so much money putting your underground things you don't see. The water, the sewer, the storm drainage, the regional detention system. A lot of work has already happened. Through the years, we've been able to accumulate from that first 50 acres to about 170 acres. And we've been instrumental in putting up six buildings scattered around very strategically that helped enable the growth of the size of it. But always preserving the idea that we've seen in other places create a village, create a new town center, create something people want. We're going to be on the Swamp Rabbit Trail. We're going to have a dog park. We're going to have a real five acre park. We're going to have hopefully a lot of sports that we've been worked on. We're going to have so many good things, maybe even capped off, and we'll talk more later about it, a connection to the Swamp Rabbit Trail. But none of it is possible, none of it without all of you. It's the people of the upstate, the people of the state, that have come together in every area. These things don't just happen. I get to stand up here and make a speech. I didn't do much any of it. I tried to hold my pieces together where we can. But it's a success that we've had in this region otherwise that have given us the resources. Instead of retiring and going off into the sunset, we want to put those resources to work here. So I invite everyone to please come look at the different boards and things. We have inspiration, the Furman Bell Tower, the old City Hall, the White's Pavilion, the old train station. We love incorporating things that are our history and continue to make history. So it's a great honor to be here, and I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here. And we're going to continue on with the program, but I really want to thank all of you. You are the community, and you make it possible. Thank you very much. It's my honor now to introduce County Council Chairman Willis Meadows. He is a leader that everyone looks to. He comes after Butch Curvin, who helped get a lot of this going to begin with. Everyone looks up to him and respects him because he knows what happens in one part of the county is good for all of the county. Willis, thank you. Thank you, thank you for the opportunity to be here and, uh, and, and take a part in this. This is a, a great thing as you look at what the, the, this says, and is all the buildings that are around here and then, then you look at what's going to be built. And you, if you can visualize all of this, uh, what a great thing for Malden, what a great thing for, for Greenville County. Uh, it, like I said, is when we talked about Union Bleachery and the uh, San Susi, that will transform San Susi. This is going to transform and change Malden. Is this, as I see it, will probably become the, the, the center of Malden. And so I, I congratulate Phil, I congratulate the Malden uh, City Council and those people that are working with it. The other thing that, that today says to me, this shows what can be done if we work together. Now, if you stop and think about it, is that there are many different governmental agencies. And a lot of times governmental agencies don't work together. They are vying for their piece of the pie and, and they're not concerned about the others. In this particular project, I think you've seen each one of the ones. The county Council has worked with Phil. Uh, we've worked and, and we want to make it a, a success. You've got Malden, then you've got uh, the, the state has, has worked on it, and also the, the federal government. So it just shows us what can be done if we work together. And, and I hope that this will transform not just this part of the county, but other parts of the county, and we'll take this as a lesson. Let's work together. Let's try to make Greenville and Greenville County the best county in the world, or keep making it the best county in the world, I should say. So thank you, Phil, for letting me just take a few minutes and take part of this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now it's my honor to introduce my good friend, Congressman William Timmons. He is a hardest working, digged in, he's young up there. What a bright future. Thank you for being here today. 
Well, good morning, Phil. I'm going to have to use the Charleston's living on its history and Greenville's making its own. I don't think the governor and the senator can do that, but I can do that representing upstate. Like uh, everybody. <laughs> so, first, it's an honor to be here. Uh, Phil has been a, a friend and mentor for, for decades, but really the, the, the mentor is what I'm going to focus on. Uh, 10, 11 years ago, I tried my hand at development. I bought land in what is now Unity Park, and it was very challenging. It was an up-and-coming area, and a lot of people uh, did not believe it was a good decision. And Phil was there to, to give me guidance and to help me understand the challenges and the opportunities I'd be facing. And I thought that it took forever to do my development. And it's only been 10 years. This is a 38-year development in the making, and, and that truly is incredible. It's a testament to the upstate. It's a testament to the importance of this project. And I... Um, I'm so excited to see it come to fruition, and uh, good things come to those who wait. So we've been waiting, and we are ready for this this project. In uh, Washington, um, things seem kind of crazy, and they, they are, but uh, this has been probably one of the most challenging years uh, in our country's history, at least in my lifetime, to say it for, for sure. Um, but we're on the other side of it now. and. Um, you know, I think that the upstate and South Carolina and the country overall is in a great position to, to really grow and to succeed. And um, I will do everything I can in Washington. I know that the governor will do all he can uh, from Columbia and um, the county and the city are all doing their part. So just know that we are working hard and we will do whatever we can to help continue uh, the, the successes that we have had and build on them for years to come. So uh, just couldn't be more happy for Phil, and um, this is going to be a great, great development. Thank you. And the honors continue, and I get to think of the many years that I've known Senator Graham, even when he was a congressman and running. He has gone to D.C. and shown D.C. what common sense can look like. He has an incredible knack for taking complex issues and boiling them down. He's a champion of foreign policy, defense. He's preserved our Supreme Court, and especially thank you for all of that. And we're very lucky to have him there, and I hope it continues there. And very honored for you to be here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I too had nothing to do with this, so it's appropriate I speak. Uh, so, so I'm sorry your government's so screwed up. William's doing the best he can. And so am I. My fear is if you let us use one of those shovels, we'll hit a sewer line or something. <laughs> so it's going to get better in Washington because it's got to get better. But the reason I come to these things is to remind myself everything's not like Congress. Thank God, right? So uh, how transformative is this going to be? People will be asking you one day, where is Greenville? And they'll say it's near Malden. <laughs> That's transformative. <laughs> uh, this is a big deal. 38 years? Yeah. I got to start thinking. I now know why Strom lived so long. It takes a while to get things done. So uh, hopefully it won't take 38 years to get it built. But I can only imagine what it's going to look like. I mean, just look here. It's just going to be transformative. The only thing I want to remind you of is I grew up in Central. <laughs> And uh, my mom and dad had a liquor store, a bar, and a pool room. And you got to go to work every day whether you feel like it or not. Does that sound familiar to some of you? So I understand business. That's where I came from. And Phil, what we need to do is make sure that you can get this thing done on time, hopefully under budget. And just think about what it's going to take to build this. You need workers. It's hard to find workers now, right? Thank God for our technical colleges and our schools that are creating a generation of people who can actually go get a job. Uh, thank God we got a governor that's pro-business. Thank you, Henry. The reason South Carolina is doing so well is we want to make you successful if you'll invest in our uh, state, in our community. You got to borrow money. You got to have people at work, uh, and eventually you got to have customers that can afford to spend money. So my job and William's job is to get the hell out of your way, let you flourish, make sure that we're your voice in Washington. When you hit a wall from a bureaucracy, knock it down. And remember today when we go back to Washington, William, 
Today, people came together to do something positive. Thank you for letting me be around something positive because I don't get to see a lot of that. God bless you all. Senator mentioned borrowing money, and it makes me think of what I might have said that I will now say, that I feel like I have something in common with the politicians here. We all like to serve people. It is a, a, a role of service in both of our industries. But I've got to use my own money. <laughs> <laughs> and borrow a lot. That's right. It's now my very distinct pleasure to introduce Governor Henry McMaster. The governor has been attorney general, lieutenant governor. He has served our state long and well. It is amazing how active he is in economic development. His presence here was not expected and greatly appreciated. It, it demonstrates an ability to choose the right side of doing things. His support for school choice, the Second Amendment, it goes immigration. He has the right stance in so many ways. We look forward to his continued service. We're very, very honored. It's a warm welcome to Governor Henry McMaster. Well, thank you. It's, just, it's mighty nice to be able to see an audience now where everybody is not wearing the masks. Uh, we, are, we are, I will report, we are, we're moving out of it. And uh, we are, people have asked, well, why, when are you going to announce that uh, South Carolina is, is unlocking it, when that, that you're opening back up? And I say, well, we never close down. So it's inappropriate to say we open back up. We took a different approach, as you might have noticed, and that was instead of trying to decide how many things we could shut down and trying to figure out what is essential and what is not essential based on a presumption that everybody's job is essential to them and their family, instead of going down that road as they did most other places, we looked at those circumstances and places that, where people were in close contact, breathing on each other, touching all the same things, and we closed those down as for just as short a period as we can. We were the last one to shut some things and the first ones to open them back up. We never had a statewide mask mandate, rather relying on local governments to make their own decisions with their own people and their own businesses in their own way. And it turned out it's worked better. The figures have shown that South Carolina is now rebounding quicker than other states. Our unemployment is lower than most states. We actually had more investment in new businesses through the Department of Commerce uh, this year in 2020 than we did the year before. So we are, we are ready to launch. This could not come at a, at a better time. It is a symbol also of what we can do when we work together. The words that we use around the office are communicate, collaborate, and, co and uh, communicate, collaborate, and cooperate. And it works every time you use it. And if you don't use it, then you're all existing in silos and you can't get things done. Fortunately, in South Carolina, most everybody knows everybody else, so it makes it a little bit easier to, to do that. And I'll tell you one story. I may, may not have told you all about the young fellow that went to church. He was new in town. He was picking out a church, and he went to this big church. And in that church, they require the new people in order to learn the congregation to, to do the ushering. So they were, thank you ladies, communicate, collaborate, and cooperate, right there. That's good. So they had this young fella doing the ushering, and uh, one day he was, it's been a, a long, long service, and he was helping an elderly lady down the steps as the service was over. And he, he said, uh, ma'am, um, I just got to say, this is, that's about the worst sermon I think I ever heard. She said, well, son, uh, do you know who I am? She said, uh, no, I don't. He said, well, I'm the preacher's mama. He said, well, uh, ma'am, do you, you know who I am? She said, no, I don't. He said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can't get away with that here because everybody knows everybody. But let me, let, me just, let me give you some numbers. In 2020, we had 126 new projects through the Department of Commerce, more than $4 million in capital investment. That's more than the year before. Uh, we've 11,000 new jobs. We, we are putting jobs back, I think, faster than any, any state in the country. We had 130 manufacturers pivoted their operations in order to provide for the personal protective equipment and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I mean, we just, we responded well. We had a team. 
we put together called Accelerate SC. We had people from development, from uh, restaurants, tourism, medicine, law, everything in between, understanding that South Carolina's business is business, as Phil has so rightly said. And they were the ones that all it would communicated. We had a lot of meetings, took a month, and we developed the plan for how to go in and how to come out of the, this pandemic. And we are, we are leading the country right now. And it's filled, and we're proud that that's worked. And it's all because of common sense that Lindsay and, Bill and William Timmons mentioned. That's what we have in South Carolina, and we rely on it. But I want to tell you, the, uh, as Phil mentioned about the people, in the positions I've been in, I've had a lot of opportunity to talk to people from around the world that are looking for places to invest millions, hundreds of billions, and even, even billion, billions of, of dollars. And they come to South Carolina, and they, they choose South Carolina, and they all say the reason is, it's been mentioned, the research universities that work with the technical colleges, that work with the four-year schools, everybody works together to, to, uh, to, to see that we, we maximize our impact. But they say the reason we come here is three, the people, the people, the people. The people of South Carolina are different from people in, the, in other parts of the country. Not saying that the other parts of the country aren't great. But we have a different flavor, and it's something that is attracting the industry, attracting people here. And I say that for two reasons. We need to understand it, but also we need to appreciate it. We need to appreciate what we've got. We are living in paradise. We have a great military tradition. We have a great Judeo-Christian tradition. When you put all of that together, you end up with the kind of success story that we're having in South Carolina. So Phil Hughes and Malden and all involved. I know this was a great team effort. I uh, didn't realize it took so much time to get here, but this is a perfect example of what the future of South Carolina looks like. And one more, one more little story. We had a, a groundbreaking just last week, a company called DC Blocks. They do data storage. Now, I remember reading that when they say when you pick up one of these little greeting cards, a birthday card at the uh, drugstore, and you open it up and it sings happy birthday to you, that is more computer power in that card that existed in the world in 1950. That's how far we've come. And, and DC Blocks is putting in 54,000 square feet of data storage. I mean, we're, we're, we're on, the, on the move. But when they were deciding where to go, South Carolina was one of the places, the city of Greenville was one on the list that had been provided by the analyzers who site selectors and others who rank and rate such things. But Greenville was not at the top of the list. And so the executives decided they'd go take a look and see what, not on what it, paper it looked like, but what it looked like in the flesh. And they walked down the streets in Greenville and, and walked around and talked to the people and looked, and they said, this is the best place of all. And that's why they're coming here. So I just say, we, we are living we are living a dream. The success that we can have for, for our generation, for the next generation, is unlimited. And right now, we're in a position not to build back up because we never tore down. We're in a position to launch. And I look forward very much to doing all I can in Columbia, in the state government, to see that everyone here succeeds and that we recognize the work and the, the successes of this great team that you have right here under this tent. Thank you. I'm not sure there's been a more distinguished group of people in Greenville for groundbreaking. Truly honored. And normally, we'd say thank you for coming. But in Malden, in the upstate, you get two for one. Now I'd like to introduce Mayor Terry Merritt to talk about something that's an additional surprise. The mayor, he's been in, Green, in the upstate for over 40 years. I think the greatest thing I can say about him is his leadership and having not only an outstanding council, we need good leadership at every level. In the developer's world, this is where we touch. And the council that he has has done a brilliant thing of having a great staff, because we often spend more time with the staff than with the elected officials. But they are the ones responsible, and I want to take this opportunity to thank the mayor again. Thank you. Thank you.
was given the signal in the back that the microphone wasn't on or the soft-spoken ones couldn't be heard. Usually not a problem for me. So is it all right, Van, you can hear back there now? <laughs> yeah. Normally I've never been told. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. It is an exciting opportunity when a mayor gets to be a part of a community change and announcement like today's event. So, as mayor of Malden, it's my privilege to welcome to our city Governor Henrik McMaster, Senator Lindsey Graham, Congressman William Timmons, and County Council Chair Willis Meadows. And thank you for your participation in today's events. For over 25, perhaps 30, I think Phil's actually said 38 years, Phil Hughes has been imagining, dreaming, and designing what will become Bridgeway Station. Uh, personal note, if you haven't had an opportunity to sit down with Phil, you miss an exciting, I'd like to say luncheon, but I never see him eat because he's presenting and talking and imagining and dreaming. And uh, it's phenomenal. You leave there like, wow, let's do it. So I really appreciate my time with you and years ago with the other members of his family. Uh, this project will become an iconic landmark destination that will have regional implications to the entirety of the upstate. As you sit with Phil Hughes, hear his vision and passion. You will begin to understand the depths of his plans. It will truly be an inspirational and timeless and timely project. Phil, on behalf of the City of Malden, congratulations on your project. Thank you for your partnership with the city, and we wish you ever success. Projects like this take years to develop and happen over many administrations. I want to also thank the former mayors, council members, and staff who have been instrumental in preparing the city for this day. Our legislative members have been a source of assistance and have given ever attention to Mr. Hughes and the city as we have had need. Thanks to State Representative Gary Smith, State Representative Bruce Bannister, State Senator Ross Turner, County Council Vice Chairman Daniel Tripp, and County Council Representative Liz Seaman for their tireless efforts. Bridgeway Station will be a great place for Malden citizens to live, shop, play and dine. Our city has been walking side by side with Mr. Hughes since the inception of Bridgeway. And we will continue to support and celebrate Phil's efforts. <coughs> One area we have been working diligently with Phil on is the funding and design of a new pedestrian bridge that will span I-385. The new bridge will connect Malden's downtown city center and village project Malden High School, Bridgeway Station, and communities further south as part of the Swamp Rabbit Trail system. Help me with something here. I need you dream with me for a minute. Think about getting on a bicycle from an apartment here at Bridgeway Station, hopping on the trail over to East Butler and riding down to Malden City Center Village. Play a game of pickleball or enjoy one of the great dining groups in the new food court. Or think about enjoying a sporting event at Malden High School and after the game, take a stroll from the parking lot across the new bridge to Bridgeway. Here you can take in a late night coffee or dessert. And then how about, how about participating in the new Bridgeway 5K? from City Center Village to Bridgeway Station. It's all part of the new dynamic Malden landscape. The new bridge and trail connection will be recognizable as a Malden icon for years to come. So without further delay, everybody under the tent, I need you to step out from under the tent, including everybody up here, Look toward this building, and then I'll ask you to help me with the unveiling of the new bridge plan. You want me to take it? Yeah. 